Failures of Cell Signaling in the Disease Cystic Fibrosis by Jackson Bartak and Patrick Timmerman. It's a little bit of background on cystic fibrosis. It's a disease that changes how your body makes uh, mucus and sweat, so it can make your mucus either too thick and it can make your sweat too salty. It also clogs your lungs. Um, It blocks your pancreas, which helps with digestion, and it makes you sweat away much of the salt that your body needs which is unhealthy. Um, a few symptoms that, that can be mild or life-threatening. kind of depends on the person. But unfortunately, most people are diagnosed are under the age of two, so they're really little. Um, it's caused by a defective CFT, CFTR gene on the seventh chromosome, and that's going to be over here. And um, where this yellow arrow is, that's, that's where it affects it. Um, over 10 million people in the United States are carriers of the disease, but being carried does not necessarily mean you have the disease. Um, it's a hereditary disease <coughs> that comes under recessive allele. And an example of this is uh, two parents that are carriers but do not have cystic fibrosis have a 25% chance of having a child with cystic fibrosis. So, this is how the cell signaling pathways normally work in a cystic fibrosis gene. So, to start... A calcitonin gene-related peptide ligand, or a CGRP, bonds to the protein receptor right here. The G protein couple receptor then phosphorylates with the GDP molecule onto the G protein right here. Then the G protein activates adenyl cyclase, converting ATP to CAMP over here. Finally, the CAMP is able to activate protein kinase A to send the cellular signal to CFTR gene so that chloride ions can pass through the cell membrane easily. Okay, so now we're going to discuss the uh, impact of the CFTR channel in the uh, allele. So what it does is it allows the CFTR channel allows ATP to change a protein shape, and it also creates a pore. Um, chloride anions can enter and exit through those pores, and when a ATP molecule is hydrolytic, it leaves the CFTR and the pore closes. So why is this significant? Um, when, a, when a pathway malfunctions and uh, the chloride can't leave the cell, um, water comes into the cell and it, it uh, dilutes the excess chloride which uh, causes dehydration of the mucus in the lungs. Uh, If there's more mucus, the lung can't cough up debris, uh, and that results in infections. So, uh, number one here, this is a properly functioning channel. Uh, Number two, that is not, that's uh, thick mucus, so this this is going to result in some infections. So... Cystic fibrosis is caused by over a thousand mutations on the seventh chromosome. So there's a thousand different possibilities. But the most common one is that the F508 gene uh, is is deleted from the replication of the DNA. So this peptide chain doesn't, doesn't allow ATP to enter the channel, meaning chloride ions cannot exit. So it's kind of like we explained earlier. It's that the um, channel is blocked by mucus, and therefore all of these chloride ions are unable to leave the cells. So, I'm going to go over just a little bit about research into curing cystic fibrosis. So currently, it's not curable, but there are available treatments, and the effects of it can be uh, lowered or brought down. So the point of re- the point of emphasis is attacking the ENAC channels, or epithelium, epithelial sodium channels. So when those chloride can't go into the cells of the body, uh, which creates salty sweat, and normally CFTR channels allow those ENAC to let sodium ions into the cell, uh, the ENAC can't close the, in the mutations, which results in hyperabsorption of the sodium ions, and uh, water has to flow into the cells, which dehydrates mucus. So hopefully with uh, all this research going to the field, 
with in the near future we can uh eliminate cystic fibrosis and uh, save a lot of lives.